All right, Oval fans. Now, don't get me wrong. I know we are still early into season two. Um, there's still going to be the obvious filler episodes and whatnot. Hopefully, even those fillers hopefully are well written. But I have to say that season two is off to a strong start. And I know it is Monday when I'm recording this video. So maybe after watching Tuesday or tomorrow night's episode three, I'm going to be like, well, damn, I spoke too soon. But season two does feel very promising so far. You know, I even did a quick little video about, wow, is it just me or does it seem like they're not saying sir and ma'am as much as they did in season one? But I think that in some ways, the Oval is better than the haves and the have-nots, even going back to season one of the Oval. It's just that I really do feel like even though season one wasn't the best start to a series, it did have some good points to it. And I think that what Tyler did is he perhaps looked at what worked for the haves and the have-nots and decided to implement that in the Oval, or just you could say bring it over uh, to the Oval, but also looked at some of the things that didn't work, things that fans complained about, and then decided to alter that and put it into the Oval as well. And, you know, just my opinions here. If you disagree, that's absolutely fine. Just don't be one of those people who's like, you're mad that the haves and the have-nots is ending, so you just despise anything else that Tyler Perry works on. I think that's a shame. You're entitled to your opinion and way of absorbing entertainment, but just don't forget the fact that while you're hung up on the fact that the haves and the have nots is coming to a close, you're probably missing a show that you might end up enjoying even more. Uh, I don't think there's a current Tyler Perry show that he put out in the past year with Viacom that I feel will ever replace the haves and the have nots in terms of my excitement. Look, Ruthless is my favorite, but I don't think it, it still hasn't reached like early have and have nots levels for me. But I do feel like the Oval does have some strong points. So I'm going to talk about them in the video. And if you have anything to add to the video that I didn't say verbally, feel free to leave it in the comments section below. And before going further, please take a moment to hit the thumbs up button to show you like the video. Also hit the bell notification icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post new content to the channel. Uh, and follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Hopefully we'll hit like a... Uh, 170,000 subscribers by the end of the month. I hope that's, a, yeah, I think that's obtainable. So without further ado, I think, you know, number one, I mean, we already got some deaths right off the bat. I mean, we get the confirmation of Gene's death, uh, Yuma death, and well, actually, we, yeah, Yuma's death, and we had Maud die last week. And yes, I know Tuesday might, you know, say, oh no, she survived. I think she's dead. But on top of that, it's just that, we're starting off with a bang. You look at the haves and the have-nots, and it took us to the end of, what, season one for a death? Technically, Little Lizzie was the first, if I'm not mistaken, but she died off-screen. So, in terms of, like, notable characters, Amanda was, like, the first big character. But here we are in the Oval, and deaths are just happening, quote-unquote, left and right. You know, from Picky, Jean, Maud, Yuma... You know, other people just getting shot. It's, it's really crazy. So, you know, Tyler Perry kind of stepped up the game in regards to, I dare say nobody's safe. You know, like even, yeah, it's just like, I don't think anybody's safe in this damn White House. So I think deaths are definitely making the Oval stand out because these people are gone. Like, you know, once they're dead, they're dead. Now it's a mystery. I'm uh, sorry, I forgot Denise. Denise, uh, how do I forget about that? It's just the fact that there are just so many things going on you wonder who's going to die next, how long before people find out, and when they do, how are they going to cover it up, and how are they going to react. Uh, another big one for me is backstory. I, I always uh, go back to v Victoria because of the fact that I think with Victoria, they're doing what they never did with Veronica, which is introducing parents, giving backstory to explain why she is the way she is. In some ways, you sympathize, but in other ways, it's like it's inexcusable how she does certain things, treat people, but at the same time, you actually understand why she turned out the way she did. And I really like that. So aside from backstory, we meet her parents. Well, her mom and her dad over the phone. But considering her mom is dead now, I think the father will show up this season. Pacing is an interesting word to use here because in season one, I don't even think we covered more than like three days time. But I do feel like season two so far is 
at a decent pace. I think the only kind of slow-ish scenes have been like the Sharon and Kareem scenes, but there have only been, what, one at the pharmacy, and that was in season two, episode one. That felt like the slowest part of the episode, but it definitely seems like things were going to be ramped up considering that Sharon might indeed be pregnant. So aside from that, you know, I will say that I do think the Oval still has too many characters compared to a have and have not if loving you is wrong, um, you know, or even a green leaf. I just feel like, you know, the Oval does seem to be spreading out the attention more uh, better where I feel like maybe because so many, so many people are being killed off and other people are put out of commission that it's really allowing some characters to shine. I still wish Hunter would do some work, you know, to really make him seem like a Jim Cryer. As opposed to just someone who is the worst of a Jim Cry who just sits around, has sex, cheats on his wife, and doesn't give a damn while he expects other people to clean up his messes. So the Oval isn't perfect, but I just wanted to do a video just quickly highlighting some of the things that I really think stand out. And I mean, I will never stop being in awe of the amazing White House set that Tyler Perry constructed. It, it's just amazing. So with that being said, what other highlights of the Oval stand out to you? Don't get me wrong. There might be some things I didn't mention in this video because I didn't want this to be like a 10 minute video. I just wanted to give the Oval some praise where I felt praise was well deserved. I really think that the cinematic work does seem more elaborate this season. I don't know how Tyler does it, but I remember watching uh, the first episode of season two. I'm like, well, damn, look, season one has some great camera work, too. But season two just felt more theatrical. So. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see how season two progresses, but I'm very pleased with what I've seen so far, and I hope it continues to get better with more time. So with that being said, uh, donate to the channel if you would like on PayPal, Cash App, or join Patreon for as little as $1 a month.